There was quite a bit of controversy and excitement in the community recently with the proposed removal of the 32-bit packages from the Ubuntu 19.10 development. At this point I'm glad I took a step back and just waited for all the excitement to die down and for a formal announcement to be made. Of which it has done. But anyway, let's start from the beginning. So bear in mind, the announcements I'm going to look at here has been superseded. Last year, the Ubuntu developer community discussed the question of whether to continue carrying forward the i386 architecture in the Ubuntu archives for future releases. The decision at the time was inconclusive, but in light of the strong possibility that they may not include the 32-bit architecture in the 2004 LTS, they took the proactive step to disable users from upgrading from the from Ubuntu 1804 to 1810. This was to avoid accidentally stranding them on nine month releases instead of letting them continue with the five year long term support. A final decision about the i386 support in Ubuntu 2004 LTS would be taken in the middle of 2019. Well, the middle has since arrived and the Ubuntu team has reviewed the facts and concluded, well at the time, that they should not carry the i386 architecture forward. So this decision has since been uh, mostly reversed. So what it would have meant, they would not provide 32-bit builds of new upstream versions of libraries. I have to say that this should not have come as a complete shock, because Ubuntu have already dropped the 32-bit builds of a desktop. This was back in version 17.10, so October 2017. So it's been getting on towards a couple of years. Alan Pope from Canonical did a bit of testing to see what the effect would be, namely on games, because this is where the lack of 32-bit could really be an adverse effect. Gaming. Not just on old systems, but on modern day systems with older, do we say older applications or, or applications built for an older architecture. Although you could also consider some games are no longer in development and would therefore be stuck at 32-bit. But I do find it quite surprising that Steam is still 32-bit. Come on, it's 2019, well it's the current year. Why are they still doing a 32-bit application in this day and age? Yeah, the 90s called and want their processors back. So he did this because a couple of assertions have been made that games would ship with their own libraries and would likely work, and that Wine64 is sufficient for playing Windows games. So it was a limited testing in VirtualBox, but you just needed to see if the application would launch, not how well it ran. So there's a bit of detail here about how the i386 architecture and applications were removed, and he installed the 64-bit version of Wine. So note the package of Wine32 has no installation candidate. So some good old games, GOG games. Theme Hospital. Fails to install, complains that Wine32 is not installed. Quake the Offering. Fails to install, similar complaint to as before. Braid. Successfully installed the game using a supplied shell script. However, game won't launch as it's, only, as it's dependent on 32-bit library files. Surgeon Simulator 2013, successfully install the game, and game launches. Select 64-bit binary. Game is a black window, but suspect this is poor OpenGL support in the virtual box. FTL Advanced Edition, game installs using supplied shell script, and game launches. Again, game is a black window, probably due to poor OpenGL support. And lastly, Shadow Warrior fails to install appears to be dependent on the Wine32. So, there's your results. We still need 32-bit. So it wouldn't have just been games affected, but also Lubuntu, which offers support for older machines. <laughs> so it would have been a bit of an irony that they do have the new LXQ desktop, but you would never have been able to use that with an older system, because that came about later after the, old, after the previous long-term support release. So back then they still had the LXDE desktop. Valve's decision was rather blunt regarding Steam. Ubuntu 1910 and future releases will not be officially supported by Steam. We will evaluate ways to minimise breakage for existing users, but we'll also switch our focus to a different distribution. Wow. Don't just try and solve the problem by moving towards 64 bits and whatever else you have to do. No, just throw the responsibility back to the operating system. I, I just think that is such a bad attitude to take. The Register did an article, and I'm just going to look at a couple of paragraphs here. So, freezing the libraries may almost be as bad though, from the point of view of Steam, since drivers for new GPUs would be impacted, and Steam without support for shiniest new GPUs 
for 32-bit games, of which there are many, would be crippled. Citing older games and wasting your newer GPU if you can't use it properly. Anyway, let's move on six days from the original announcement to the announcement on 24th of June. The official statement from Canonical regarding the 32-bit i386 packages for Ubuntu 19.10 and the long-term support release of 2004. Thanks to the huge amount of feedback this weekend from gamers, Ubuntu Studio and the Wine community, we will change our plan and build selected 32-bit i386 packages for Ubuntu 19.10 and 2004. We will put in place a community process to determine which 32-bit packages are needed to support legacy software and can add to that list post-release if we miss something that is needed. They will also work with Wine, Ubuntu Studio and gaming communities to use container technology to address the ultimate end of life for 32-bit libraries. It should stay possible to run old applications on newer versions of Ubuntu. Snaps and LXD enable us to have complete 32-bit environments and bundled libraries to solve these issues in the long term. There is a real risk to anybody who is running a body of software that gets little testing. The facts are that most 32-bit x86 packages are hardly ever used at all. That means fewer eyeballs and more bugs. They do mention about bugs and security and citing the Spectre and Meltdown. Many of these mitigations for these attacks have been unavailable for 32-bit systems. So the balance has been trying not to weaken the security while still accommodating older software. Difficult choice. But hey, if they can look at containerizing as an alternative, then that could still be a realistic option to use older applications. Again, I'm still saying older applications, bearing in mind that the modern version of Steam is still 32-bit. Well, that was the official statement from Canonical regarding 32-bit in Ubuntu 19.10. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.